This is a quick video on what I've done with the spider beam pole. I got it about a year ago and you might have seen the review video where I compared it with smaller poles such as a 9m squid pole. Since then I've set it up at home replacing a timber mast that fell down after high winds. The spider beam pole supports a G5 RV set up as an inverted V at 11 meter height. For the mounting cradle, which I made out of timber, I dug a big hole in the ground, put in quick set concrete, then the timber, and then in between, there's a PVC tubing, which is the cradle for this spider beam pole. So I can ensure the mast is going to be straight. I've just knocked a few thin nails in and got lines with dangling nails so that when they're vertical then you know that the pole is straight. Fairly critical when you're dealing with quick set concrete. There's not too much time to change your mind. To keep it rigid, I use small pieces of irrigation tubing. Possibly the cheapest source of wire for antennas is old extension cords. This one, which was 20 metres long, came from a second hand shop for $5. Pretty good value for the 60 metres of wire contained. To get the wires out, just use a hobby knife, run a slit down the length of the cable and then pull the cables out. Because this is a tuned feeder dipole, I'm using 450 ohm ladder line. That's thick enough for a hole to be drilled through the plastic spacer and there to be a second piece of chopping board material which provides cord anchorage. Some more holes to provide anchorage for the wire and then it's soldered to the feed line here. Something like this could be useful for a G5 RV a ZS6BKW or any tuned feeder doublet. When you've got semi-permanent mounting like this, it's important to ensure the sections don't slip inside one another. To prevent that, you can use clamps like this. These are screwable adjustable clamps that grip onto the pole Underneath is rubber strip to ensure the pole isn't squeezed or damaged and that's encased in black heat shrink tubing. You can buy all that from Spider Beam as an accessory kit or you can make your own. This is my solution for an antenna mast in a small yard. 12 metres tall Yet, if required, it can be collapsed, even below the fence line. That could be useful in high winds or when the landlord is around to inspect. As for results, here's the log from the recent VK Trans Tasman contest, with contacts made on 160, 80 and 40 metres. Nearly 100 contacts were made over about 3 hours of casual operating. Distances worked were up to approximately 3,000 kilometres. If you want to get the most from Amateur Radio, check out my ebooks Minimum QRP, Hand Carried QRP Antennas, and Getting Back Into Amateur Radio. All have been favourably reviewed, and you can get them for a low price in electronic form. Visit my website, vk3ye.com, and follow the links, or search their titles in Amazon. You can also like the VK3YE Radio Books page on Facebook. The books are available in electronic form and in some countries in paperback as well.